Hello and welcome to this special edition of Inside Government. In this special edition, my guest in studio is the Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Leona Romeo Marlin. Prime Minister, welcome. Thank you for having me, Cedric. Prime Minister, observance and reflection of the one-year anniversary of the passing of Hurricane Irma is the focus that the government of St. Martin has embarked upon since September 6, 2018. One of the key things you've been doing is on a media tour that allows you the opportunity to explain to the population the process that we've gone through since Irma. Now, you, I'm sure at this point you are uh, very sensitive talking about the Irma experience, but it all ties in to where we're going to end up being in the future and setting a good tone for what we are doing now and getting ourselves in a proper recovery phase. The World Bank trust fund, these are the experiences that you went through. Let's start first and foremost in defining the St. Martin Recovery and Resilience Trust Fund. What is it for those that might still not be clear? Well, you know, Cedric, indeed, um, I'm glad for the question. What is the trust fund? In 2017, after Hurricane Irma passed, the Netherlands committed 550 million euros to St. Martin, or $580 million dollars. And the purpose of that was for the recovery of St. Martin. Those funds were given under three conditions. First was we had to establish the integrity chamber. Mm -hmm. We also had to establish the border control. And lastly, that the World Bank would be used as the facilitator to disseminate those funds. So those were the three conditions. And I believe that it was in January, the first set of World Bank representatives came to St. Martin to start talks, getting to find out what is the situation on St. Martin, what is needed on St. Martin, just to affiliate themselves with the government of St. Martin as well, because this was something new for them. This was the first time St. Martin was working with the World Bank, and also that the World Bank was in a position where they are no longer the um, St. Martin's the third party, Mm -hmm. and St. Martin is the recipient, but the donor is a different country. Usually, it's the World Bank directly with the country. Mm -hmm. So they came in January where they started talks with St. Martin and we didn't begin the the, the, the whole process until the trust fund agreement was signed. And that was in, I believe it was April Mm -hmm. that the trust fund was signed and that was between the Netherlands and the World Bank. And that's where everything started. Right, right. Was it a difficult process for the individuals of the World Bank being able to get a quick grasp on the current situation with St. Martin? How would you describe that? I think that um, even as of today, it Mm -hmm. is a a growing process. It's a progress in making. Again, this is something new for them. And as we go along the way, it is um, things to be learned, things that we didn't know before. We have persons within the committee that we have right now this is the first time they're actually doing procurements according to World Bank standards. Right. So everything is basically new, mm-hmm. but we are we are progressing. And um, our first uh, agreement was signed on July 12th. And that agreement is the first set of monies that we received. And in order to understand what's next, there were some trainings. We had trainings, the staff had training on, on the um, procurement processes, how to work with the World Bank. We also gave a training or workshop in the, um, at the Bel Air Community Center for citizens and companies and businesses that want to understand how the World Bank works and how to go about, you know, with the whole procurement processes that was also given. We will have more as well because the more informed the public are about the functioning of the World Bank and doing business with World Bank, then they are more, you know, they have that information, information. more knowledge yeah. and can execute accordingly, according to World Bank standards. Correct, correct. So it was a learning experience, you it would say, on both sides. It was definitely a learning both, experience both sides. on both sides. And it's still a learning experience. You can imagine as you begin in the, in the, 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 the first part of the process, it's a little tricky. Right. Understanding what needs to get done, how does things work in government. So in the beginning, of course, it was a little tricky and a little bit, of okay, sometimes you feel a little skeptical. Sometimes you feel, oh no, this is a bit too overwhelming. Right. So the staff and the people that have to work with them and they themselves as well. But as we speak now, I, I always say they're almost like family because they have the expertise within the various fields of um, and areas where we need help as a country. 
And I, I believe that, you know, when you get to see them time and time again, the same set of persons, then it's almost like family now. Correct. But um, definitely we are um, learning from each other. Mm. And then that's so important. And it's important when you're going to work in St. Martin, understand the culture of St. Martin, the culture of our government. And then we in, in, in turn have to understand how things work there. What can the people of St. Martin expect? What has already been signed off by the World Bank and the Netherlands and St. Martin is basically the repairment of our public shelters. That is um, a high priority. We have also the repairment of houses for low-income families. That's also earmarked in that project. When disaster strikes, it affects all of us. Yeah, girls, tell Desan to come and see me. I'll put her name at the top of the list. You need to know that as a citizen, your rights are always Please. protected. I just need help. Here, fill those out. I have filled out this form three times already. I need help. This is just a waste of time. If you feel your rights have been violated or have a legitimate complaint against any government body, even in these troubling times, <laughs> we are here to listen to and act upon your concerns. The Ombudsman will use all of its resources to seek a fair resolution, keeping the government fully accountable. The Ombudsman, protecting your rights. Brought to you by the International Ombudsman Institute. Hi, what's up, St. Martin? My name is Rene Leverett, and I play baseball. And I've represented St. Martin in numerous international tournaments and professionally around the world. Sports matters to me because it reveals and develops character. So I challenge the business community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facilities. I also ask the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take the challenge and step up for sports. Because hashtag sports matters, hashtag are you in. Looking at the fund itself, uh, reminding the general public again, how much was allocated for this fund? In the first set of uh, monies, that is the first tranche, 102.7 million U.S. dollars was allocated for the, um, the first tranche. In the first tranche, we have several different um, projects. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that um, the, first, the first set of monies that I signed off was for the emergency recovery project, and that was in a tot the total amount of um, 55.2 million U.S. dollars. Okay. And that was for some the first projects, then we gave off 22.5, and then another 25 million, and then soon to come, another 25 million will give up, um, be um, given, and in total, 102.7 for the first set of monies. Right. Another set of monies will be coming in October. That's already earmarked for October, but we are working diligently within the guidelines that we have in order to access these funds. But yes, indeed, 102.7 million in the first tranche. There are four tranches. So four, four sets of monies that will be coming, and the first one, the first set has been... Has given. been already earmarked yes. and, and delivered. Now, looking at the uh, projects and priorities for government of St. Martin, in relation to these funds, what were the priority projects? Well, in the first, in the first um, stage, we identified the emergency recovery projects. Those are the first projects. And in that project where 55.2 million U.S. dollars was given, what can the people of St. Martin expect? What has already been signed off by the World Bank and the Netherlands and St. Martin is basically the repairment of our public shelters. That is um, a high priority. We have also the repairment of houses for low-income families. That's also earmarked in that project. We looked at the resilience of our utility company, GEBE, so when it comes to the, the water system and also electricity, how we can make it more sustainable mainly looking at ensuring that a lot of our cables are underground and ensuring that the water tanks are sustainable and, and you know, can, you know, are good. Right. We also looked at the, um, the capacity of the fire department as it relates to those things that were damaged and ensuring that those things got replaced and repaired. We are also looking at the, um, the police station at the Phillipsburg area and ensuring that those are also restored, the one in Phillipsburg and the one in Simpson Bay. And we have added on the CRIF, that is the, the insurance, the, the, the Caribbean Risk Insurance Facility. Mm -hmm. We are a member of CRIF that came out of the first emergency funds so that we're able to 
um, make sure that St. Martin have funds readily available right after a storm so that we can, you know, be able to function and recover faster instead of using our national budget. Is the access um, to the funds exclusive to the government of St. Martin or are there other organizations that have access to it as well? Well, the access to the, to the funds for right now in the emergency projects mm-hmm. is for government in the sense of, because we also have the housing foundation, it's semi-government, it's the government, they are operating for government in, that, in the first set of monies, they are also being financed. And um, they're not directly government, they're operating on behalf of government, and, and so they have, um, have access to that fund. I believe also we had, um, mostly, indeed, it is government-owned, um, government owned um, government. NGOs. NGOs mm-hmm. got access to it, but not to the trust fund. The NGOs, they had access to the beginning set of monies um, before we got approval. They ha- I believe it was 7 million or so that they got so that they could start with roof repair for um, the, the population of St. Martin. But when you have the... The, when you look at who benefits across the board, it's not government only benefits, it's but for the people, but the projects go through government. The projects um, are the ones that government have identified, and it can be in any area. For example, one of the things that we're discussing, and I'm sure that you've heard a lot about, is the airport. Yes, it's a um, we're the shareholder, but um, do we have direct? Do we benefit directly from it as a government? No. But the people in general, yes. But if our economy is go, um, up and running and robust again, then yes, in that way. But mostly, all of our projects will go through the government. Or thus far, it has gone through government. So no outside entity would get it just like that. To give, an, to give you another example, the Maho Group with Sinesta and also Great Bay. Right, I was going to ask They came you. up with a great project. Right. But that project came through VSR. VSR, the Ministry of VSR, took that project and has enhanced that project because it's a good project where you have, um, and that's also another set of monies that is coming from the World Bank, where we took we took the the the, the plan or the the idea that the Maho Group and um, Sin- uh, Sinesta and Sinesta. Great Bay that mm-hmm. they had in order to not have mass unemployment mm-hmm. to enhance the skills of their workers. Now, we took that and we increased it. We enhanced it to the maritime sector. And within short, it will probably go into the construction s- um, sector as well, ensuring that those persons get the necessary skills that are needed in order to assist in rebuilding and the entire recovery process of St. Martin. So indeed, that is um, that was um, $22.5 million um, U.S. dollars was allocated for that specific project, and it will in the end benefit all of our all of the people of St. Martin that have participated in that project. And when I would say the whole society in as a whole, because if we train persons to um, enhance their skills, whether it's in the maritime sector or the hospitality sector, in the end, it's still a product of St. Martin. They are going to be working for the company, but whatever service they give have a reflection on what we do here as an island as a whole. Correct. Because I was going to ask you that question as it relates to how government is working with the private sector, and you have answered that with that yes. corporation there. Um, and a, a very, very interesting thing to note, the comparison to how we handled the 1995 Hurricane Lewis scenario uh, versus now, because we know what took place then, massive layoffs, one of the biggest um, resorts closed down, so people literally changed their life direction based on that. Um, we noticed that this time around, I don't think our economy would, would have been able to survive such an effect because we were completely in different economic time then, huh? That is so true. And I also think what added to that as well, persons w- who are working within the field right now in mm-hmm. VSA understood what happened in 95 and the effects of such. So therefore, when that project came about, they, they, they happily endorsed it. Exactly. Yeah. The National Recovery Program Bureau plays a role in this process. Explain how that organization functions. The, the Program Bureau is basically, we have right now the Interim Recovery Committee. They are acting temporarily until the bureau is, is up and running. And that bureau will be manned by about 20 persons, and there will be a director. The director has already been, um, been, um, been uh, selected. And I think that um, within short, we will see that 
we will have persons working in the IRC, which is the Interim Recovery Committee. Their job will be over eventually, and this bureau will take over the managing of the entire um, projects. So I um, remember I told you that there are different tranches, so there are other projects to come, and that bureau will be um, executing or supervising those projects. Everything will be going through that um, specific bureau along with the steering committee. The steering committee will be working with that bureau. So we're looking within short by maybe November to have that bureau up and running. Of course, we have to, to, to advertise the, um, the vacancies, but that will be the job of the director. And once he is in, in, to take up his position, then he will um, start that process as well. But I do know that they are already hiring the, I believe it's the office assistant and um, I think an office manager. So those two positions have already been filled, but there are so many other positions that need to be filled. But within short, the people of St. Martin would see the positions being advertised to ensure transparency and to ensure that we meet, meet as much pos- persons as possible we will also be advertising to um, via the the ministry, the Hefmin, the minister plenipotentiary in the Netherlands. Okay. And and the focus of the bureau once formed and everybody's in place, what will its tasks be? The task will be to implement the projects that the ministries or the government have identified that are important for St. Martin. Which goes hand in hand with the National Recovery and Resilience Plan, Plan yes. itself. We are focused right now on housing. We do know that there's a housing shortage on St. Martin, and that has our, one of our top priorities. We're also looking at tourism and commerce. That's also a top priority. We're also looking at solid waste and sanitation management. You know, we have a big situation there at the, the dump, and we're really, really looking into resolving those issues. So that's also a top priority for government. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Jose Helga and I play basketball. I have organized basketball events in St. Martin. Sport matters to me because it makes everybody come together in unity. So I challenge the businesses community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facility. I'm also asking the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take on the challenge and step up for sports because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sports SSN Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter, hashtag are you in. When disaster strikes, it affects all of us. Yeah, girl, tell Desan to come and see me. I'll put her name at the top of the list. You need to know that as a citizen, your rights are always Please. protected. I just need help. Here, fill those out. I have filled out this form three times already. I need help. This is just a waste of time. If you feel your rights have been violated, or have a legitimate complaint against any government body. Even in these troubling times, we are here to listen to and act upon your concerns. The Ombudsman will use all of its resources to seek a fair resolution, keeping the government fully accountable. The Ombudsman, protecting your rights. Brought to you by the International Ombudsman Institute. Hello, St. Martin. My name is Stephanie Medina, and I play football with the Walichi Roma soccer team. I have represented St. Martin in many different games. For example, the Dutch Caribbean Women's Soccer Cup. I played against Bonaire, Aruba, and Curacao right here in this stadium. Sports matter to me because it makes me happy, it keeps me fit and healthy, and it is very fun. So I ask the business community to take on this challenge and will help us rebuild our facilities. And I also ask the community to nominate the local businesses in your area and take on the challenge and step up for sport. Why? Because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sport Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter. Hashtag are you in. Prime Minister, the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. Highlight a few areas of priority that the government of St. Martin is focusing on. We are focused right now on housing. We do know that there's a housing shortage on St. Martin, and that has our one of our top priorities. We're also looking at tourism and commerce. That's also a top priority. We're also looking at 
solid waste and sanitation management. You know, we have a big situation there at the, the dump and we're really, really looking into resolving those issues. So that's also a top priority for the government. I know that it's always been an issue that you would expound upon whenever you get a chance to speak to the public and you're asked for patience. Yes. This is not something that's going to happen, um, as we would say in local parlance, today for tomorrow. Yes. Um, but it's going to take some time. Yes, indeed. I, I think that um, we, we started out in January with the talks. Mm -hmm. We um, first started this whole project in April where the agreement was signed between the Netherlands and the World Bank. Dealing with the World Bank, there is processes and procedures that are in place, and that takes time. Right. And indeed, you know, we, who, you know, there were many doubts in the community whether we would have received this monies or not. And now the monies are trickling in, but it took patience. Right. So I'm asking the public to just have some patience with us and help us, you know, help you by just making sure that you don't raise the expectations too high. Just have a little patience with the government, and all of the projects that we have identified will be realized. Sometimes you, you, we would want it to go faster as well. And um, believe me, if we could, we would have. But like I stated before, working with the World Bank, it's a new process for us. It's a new experience. And normally, a project with the World Bank takes one year. Normally, we were able to do certain things, signing off on certain agreements in, within three months. Wow. And for them, that's a record time. For us, that's being slow. But um, I can understand that people are impatient, but again, patience is a virtue, and I, I just ask for the, um, the patience of the public of St. Martin as we continue to focus in realizing all of the projects that were identified in the, um, in the recovery of St. Martin and making sure that we follow all procedures in order to have access to the full total $580 million U.S. dollars. We all have a role to play in the national recovery and resilience of St. Martin. Prime Minister, thank you very much for taking the time to sit down and talk to us and, of course, take us through the reflection period and understanding the way forward for us as a people and, of course, the government of St. Martin working to achieve their goals. So thank you very much for coming in. You're most welcome, Cedric. And, of course, to our radio listeners and television viewers, thank you for tuning in and being a part of this special edition of Inside Government. If you've missed our broadcast, be sure to log on to the official government website, stmartingov.org, for video on demand. And, of course, we invite you to tune in to St. Martin Gov Radio 107.9. I'm Cedric Peterson. On behalf of the Department of Communication, thanks for tuning in. <music>